Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the motorway range test in the Polestar 2 standard range single motor. Today, we're gonna find out just how far the base version of the Polestar 2 can go on a full charge of battery on the motorway at motorway speeds. And then at the very end of the video, we're going to put this car into chart comparing it to its WLTP rigid range and also to the competition. Will it be better? Will it be worse? I have no idea how it will perform, but what I'm sure about is the weather today is not the best for doing a range test on the motorway. It's rainy and wet outside. Yes, mild 12 degrees Celsius outside, but it is very windy with a wind of five meters per second. So not the best of conditions. And also guys, a little bit about this car and how this loan is going to work in the upcoming week. So I have this car on loan from Polestar for a few weeks to do my standard test. You know, the Norwegian high speed run, the 10 to 80% charging time and charging speed test, exterior interior, tours and the review all the videos i usually do here on the channel so for that please drop a like on the video down below that is much much appreciated but we also have the ability to borrow this car from polestar at short notice so if there are any other videos you guys want me to make please drop a comment in the comment section down below that is very important so yeah that's going to be pretty awesome that means we can you know if you want me to go to germany or to italy or wherever drop a comment down below the comments that you get the most upvotes i will definitely make a video about that topic or to that place so short about this car this is the standard range single motor the base 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 version starting here in norway at 350,000 kroners and per november 2021 tesla just you know adjusted their prices making the standard range plus of the model 3 20,000 kroners more expensive than this car now this has basically all the bells and whistles it has the pilot package and it has the plus package for me the plus package is the most important for doing all of these tests because it includes the heat pump this is a 2022 model so yeah pretty cool it also has the latest software update the ota p1.7 so this car with the single motor with the 19 inch wheels the heat pump and the latest software update this should be the most efficient version of the Polestar 2 so I'm so excited for that but this car all in with winter tires comes in at less than 450,000 kroners and for this package this car this interior because the interior and the exterior is basically the same as the dual motor long range which comes in at like 150,000 kroners more almost with all the bells and whistles at this price point yeah this is quite a deal so i'm pretty excited to put this car to the test and i know a lot of you guys have been waiting for the test on this car for the longest of time and believe me guys i've been asking polestar and finally they gave me a car that i could do all my extensive testing with and also a little bit of the freedom to do other videos as i just described and then lastly guys this test here as usual starts here at the bkk charters at chesmukarsha who are also the sponsor of today's video they are one of the largest providers of fast lightning and rapid charging here in norway they have an awesome app that gives you charging speed charging curve price everything in real time so if you want to support the channel download their app to android or iphone there will be a link in the description box down below because most definitely there is a charter from bkk where you live in norway they have charters all across the country so we're starting here we're going to the mills tower and then back again to this starting point 233 kilometers on the motorway with speed limits mostly of 110 kilometers an hour that's about 70 miles per hour so guys we're just going to charge here to we're at 96 percent now so i think we're just going to disconnect here and then we'll be on our way and i'll see you guys on the road We have now been on a road for a little bit less than half an hour and you guys can see how bad this weather is. But actually when we started, it wasn't as bad as this. This, this is just started, but it's been wet. And now we're gonna approach the wind suck up here to see that we actually do have, is it a crosswind? Oh, why is the wind suck like completely dead? Yeah, a little bit of a tailwind. Not too bad actually, a little bit of a tailwind. Okay, let's take a look at the average consumption. Thus far, we are now at 19.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and we have now covered 51 kilometers. So average consumption, not too bad, especially since we are climbing to an elevation. And look at this, guys. This is the brand new range, range assistant 
that um, came with the latest software update. If you haven't seen my videos on the P1.7 update, there will be two videos in the description box down below where I go into them in detail. I also do some charging tests and long trip tests on the Polestar 2 long range dual motor 2021 model without the heat pump. But okay, this is what the car is showing. Now it's showing the live consumption there, 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This will just go up and down and then the projected range of 260 kilometers. You can also see that it shows the consumption uh, or what yields high consumption or low consumption. So speed, high consumption, climate control, low consumption. We are running at 20 degrees Celsius in eco mode and we have a calm driving style because we're just you know under uh, autopilot just going the speed limit but okay guys we are now just going to continue on today's weather is not very nice yeah look at this terrible weather so uh mm -hmm. okay we're just going to continue on guys and then i'll catch up with you when we get to our turnaround point look at that beauty in the distance the awesome, the spectacular, the now world famous Mears Tower. Actually the tallest wooden building in the world for you guys who are new to the channel or this, well, this uh, video format where I drive to this place and then I go back again. And guys remember, once we hit 30,000 subscribers, which should happen, uh, maybe it's already happened once this video goes out, or oh, maybe I'm too optimistic, but once that happens guys i'm going to make a vlog where i'm staying here at the mias tower because not only is it a restaurant or is there a restaurant there but it's also a hotel so that is pretty cool so guys remember subscribe to the channel down below hit that notification bell if you like ev content if you like polestar content if you like whatever content that's related to testing evs and also if you want me to stay at the mias tower but okay guys consumption look at this down here now 19.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers hmm that is not too bad actually especially being a Polestar 2 yes according to the wind map we do have a tailwind of about five meters per second but when we looked and passed the uh, Minnesota Brewer, there wasn't too much wind so I am pretty curious to see how much the consumption will rise till we get back to our starting point. That is the big, big question. Will it rise a lot or a little? Will it rise at all? Hmm, 19.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is not bad. Okay, guys, we're now turned around, heading back towards Oslo. And I'll catch up with you when we get back to our starting point or our end point at Chesmo Center. Okay, here is our exit, exit 45. And guys, when once we turned our head or the nose of the car southward, I could really hear and feel that wind. So yeah, it really is windy today. I know I, yeah, you can see, look at that guy. It's just blowing over. Yeah, it's pretty windy especially where the landscape was a little bit more open it was super super windy so of course the consumption has risen as we have uh, you know uh, turned around and we're also going to stop the timer here two hours and five minutes which seems to be pretty spot on as to where we want to be so consumption 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers okay 21.1 let's see if you guys can see that because that will be important to note 21.1 so it's gone up a fair bit but what will be interesting to see is the calculations at the end of the video and also we're going to connect to a charger now and i have on purpose not navigated to these chargers because i wanted to see how far we could go today to calculate the range if we navigate to a charger the car will preheat the battery and that will you know drain some uh, juice out of the battery uh, rising consumption that's not what we're going to do today uh, we're going to do that in another test. So as I said, that is fair to the other cars on the chart because no other cars preheat. That would, you know, skew the results. 
Oh, I hope I took off my seatbelt. I want to get up the trip computer here. So this is the trip computer, 230.8 ki kilometers is the measured distance by the car, but according to Google Maps, it is 233. 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and average speed according to the car, 113 kilometers an hour. But that's what we're gonna take a look at at the table at the end of the video. First, we're gonna to connect to a charter here. We're going to see what kind of charging speed we actually get after a few hours driving on the road without preheating the battery. Outside temperature, 13 degrees Celsius. Yeah, this windy. So I do apologize, guys, about the wind. So we're gonna find the app here. Okay, so we're gonna take this one, SK22, and then we're going to start the app here. We had some relays clicking. We are now charging, so we're gonna hop in the car because it is windy outside to see what kind of charging speed we get. And again, I am not familiar. This is the very first time I am actually driving the standard range single motor. So, but what from what I could find online, the peak charging speed should be 116 kilowatts. So a bit slower than the, uh, the long range version. So that seems to be the Achilles heel of this car. But what's going to be interesting, guys, is at the end of the video to see how this car performs in theoretical range and also compared to other EVs on the market. Okay, we're picking up speed quite nicely here. We connected at, was that 38% battery? And um, yeah, we are building speed. We are building speed and we seem to be peaking at 94 kilowatts. Is this just like a temporary plateau or will we... Will we pick up more speed and hit that peak of 115 or 116 kilowatts? But again, I don't know what the charging curve looks like on this car. But from my tests with the long range dual motor with preheating, if we preheat it, we would probably be getting that uh, peak speed because temperature outside 13 degrees Celsius, not a problem at all. And also 15% battery. We hit peak like with 2% battery in the Polestar 2 long range dual motor with outside temperatures of around like seven or eight degrees Celsius. But okay, it seems like to be a temporary plateau. We are now at hundred kilowatts. And also the readout here is the actual juice that goes into the battery. If we were to, you know, look at the charger or at, at the app, we would actually be getting a little bit more speed. Okay, 110 kilowatts. That's a little bit more like it. I actually just uh, stopped recording, put away the camera, and then I looked up at the screen again, and then we were boom at 110 kilowatts. Again, it's not that 150 kilowatts. I I was hoping, or I know we d d won't peak at more than 115, but I'm hoping for a little bit better peak charging speed with this, you know, the standard range dual uh, single motor, because it seems to be that charging speed there is, yeah, the Achilles heel of this car. But okay, 110 kilowatts, that is not bad at all, guys. Before we end today's video, let's take a look at the consumption, battery usage, battery size, calculate theoretical range, and see how this car compares to its competition. So we used 83% battery going from here to Mills Tower and then back again. Average consumption 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. The net battery capacity of this car, the available capacity from zero to 100% is 61 kilowatt hours. Yes, there is a buffer below zero like in most EVs. We're not interested in that even though, well, I usually drive these EVs down to below zero and well beyond that. That's main, meant as a safety buffer so I don't recommend anybody driving your EVs down below zero. You also don't have any power below zero. But okay, that is besides the point. So if you take the battery size, we divide it by the consumption, and then we subtract about 3% in heat, heat loss, which is, you know, the standard calculation we do. You know, it's not accurate this test to a decimal point, but it is an approximation that should be good enough for most people. With those calculations, we get a theoretical range under today's conditions of 200 and 80 kilometers. And guys, look at the table down below. Similar conditions to the 21 model, long range, dual motor, Polestar 2, non-heat pump, pre-P1.7 OTA update. We get the exact same range. That is pretty impressive. Okay, the consumption and the range of the Polestar 2 in that test was not impressive. So is that the conclusion? Well, Conditions were arguably even worse with that car because it was raining, you know, the whole time. Today we have had, you know, periods of non-rain, non and but most of the time it was actually raining today. 
and we had wet roads throughout the whole trip. But we had more wind today. But look at the, compared to the other cars, look at the Hyundai Ioniq 5, for example, which was done in much better conditions, should have a longer WLTP range. Yes, that is the dual motor version, but I don't make up the WLTP range numbers, which I compare the cars to in this test. This car can go further. That is impressive. That is impressive, guys, that this is, has more range than the high end Ionic 5 considering the conditions. And if the conditions were, well, close to something we had with the Tesla Model Y, which has even lower consumption than this, well, I'm pretty sure this car could go well beyond 300 kilometers and maybe even lower consumption than the Model Y. I mean, that is impressive. That is impressive. People have, since day one with the Polestar 2, critique this car for having high consumption and being inefficient and that is has been true to 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 some extent but now with this update this version with the heat pump with the single motor version looks like the tables are turning no it's not as efficient as a tesla model 3 and also people will probably argue that the model y on the table is more efficient but again guys not the same conditions very different conditions you can't compare them directly and i'm pretty sure this car with those conditions would be even more efficient so to tesla people and i'm just saying this because there are going to be comments yes teslas are the most efficient and other all, every other EV is trying to catch up with Tesla. That is fine. We know that. It's been like that for ages. But if you look at this car compared to every other EV on the market, and especially the price and the range for the money, this is very impressive and an interesting proposition at this price point. I just have to say that. So guys, I'm going to leave you with the charging curve here from when we connected to when we're going to leave in the outro. So don't click out yet. Instead of the you know typical thumbnail or the photo I leave with an e-tron GT or some car I have, I'm going to leave you with the charging curve. So guys, let me know down below, is this now a contender for your next EV? Or do you not want this car anymore because you don't think the range is good enough? I'm curious to know down below, so let me know. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.